Tricks may be for kids, but Pedialyte is for everyone. Hello, and welcome to my art studio. art studio! This week has been a bit chaotic. Exhibit A. Ooh. I may or may not have gotten a sudden tattoo that I'm not allowed to get anything on or it on anything. So, I'm a little bit afraid of aerosols and chemicals and glues and paints and hot things. There it is, you check it out. Bleh, fun things. Yay, there it is. It's so pretty. <laughs> and I wanna keep it that way. So since I am recovering, I thought it would be a lot of fun to share some behind the scenes stuff with all of you. Some of you may not know that I host a craft show. It's called Good It Stuff. It's over on the Crown Channel, over on Twitch. It's a lot of fun. We make crafts, I interview amazing people. They tell me all about their lives, their hobbies, their pets. It's a very fun time. Some of you may not know that I make a little pre-production video for the crew before the show, sort of walking them through what I'm going to be doing for the week so that they know how to set up the proper shots and so that we get on the same page about what needs close-ups, what doesn't, what sort of colors and steps that we're going to be doing so they know how to best facilitate giving me the best shots and making the show look great. Now, these were sort of just meant to be internal. I thought it'd be really fun to show you. And since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, when this video will be up, I made you all a Valentine. <whistles> anyway, I hope you have a lovely Tuesday and enjoy the crafts. Roll the footage. All right, today I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy DIY to make some Pop-Tart plush little throw pillows. So first you're gonna take some felt in your desired crust color, cut it into two pieces, like that. <laughs> and then we're gonna make it squiggly on each side to simulate some pastry dough. And I wanted to do a little bite out of mine, so I went with the classic wild berry and strawberry flavors, but I took a little chunk out of the top of one, and now I'm just adding that yummy red filling. <laughs> I'm just doing a quick hot glue on either side and sandwiching it so that it looks like the inside has been munched on. And this is a really great no-sew option. Everything is glued, gluing down the frosting, adding some fun kid craft decorations. I went with some pom-poms and then I went with some different sprinkles because the proportions were just a little off for me. So I shredded some spare felt and I like that a lot better. Once you're finished decorating your Pop-Tarts, I just took some polyfill and stuffed them and closed up the edge with some hot glue. And you're done. I love making stuffed food. I think they're a really fun gift or dog toy and a great pillow. Happy crafting. I'm gonna be showing you a technique on how to make geode soap. So first we're starting off with clear unscented soap and everything we're using today is vegan if that's a concern. And we're taking a wiggly soap knife and just chopping this into cubes. Nothing too precise, just rough cubes. <laughs> and then we're transferring that over into a heat safe bowl and saving that for later. Now I'm just taking another soap cutting tool. You can also just use a knife, but I had these on hand and these ones, instead of cubes, we're gonna kind of cut them jagged and rough like little crystals. Now, moving the cubes over to a double boiler, I am just heating this up until it is fully melted, making sure to stir to give it some nice even heat. And once you have this nice soupy texture, I'm gonna transfer it over to a pouring bowl. Now from the mica powders, you're gonna pick your colors. I'm going for an amethyst vibe today, so I'm starting with the lightest color and mixing that into the melted soap. We are going to be pouring this into these soap bar molds, just one bar at a time, getting darker as we go. If you also have some silicone ice molds, those work just as well. Now that we've got a darker one, I'm gonna make my second bar. And then last up, I wanted to add a bit of red just to give it a, another dimension and color. I really liked how it turned out. And this is around the time your soap is gonna start to dry. Don't worry about it. We're gonna be cutting these into chunks. 
Now I'm taking my lavender scent and I'm just gonna add it to another batch of clear that I melted up, stirring that in. And now we're taking our big loaf soap mold and taking those crystals that we had cut, the jagged ones, and laying a first layer and melting in. And once our bars are dry, we're gonna make these a bunch of jagged rocks too. <laughs> I wanted to definitely keep the gradient, so I put in all the light cubes first, and then down to the dark ones. And then once that was all made, I made another light batch of lavender and just filled that block in and made it nice and solid. Now the great thing about silicone molds is you just kind of pop them out, and then you flip them over, and you get all that really cool, beautiful texture, and that's why we made all those little chunks before. Now you're gonna take your soap cutting knife and you're gonna cut it into some bar-shaped pieces. And then the fun part is we get to sculpt them into fun little geode shapes. The best part is you don't have to be too precise because this is nature, baby. Be as uneven and adventurous as you want. Now don't throw away any of these scraps because we're gonna reuse them in a bar of soap. Once these are all done, I'm gonna move these on over, melt half of them. I added in a little extra color so the bottom of the bar was darker. And then you just drop in the last of the crystals and make these fun geode bars. And this is how they turned out. They're absolutely lovely. They'd also make a really great gift. Happy crafting. I'm gonna show you the way that I make cellophane wings. So first I take some craft paper and sketch out the design that I want. Today I'm going for a sort of fairy wing type. So you can actually find a lot of really good close-up images of insect wings for inspiration. Next, you're gonna cut some wire. I'm using 16 gauge because my wings aren't very heavy, and I'm just sort of molding them to the sides of each top and bottom section of the wing. And then I'm taking some electrical tape and wrapping it around each of the wires just to give it some more stability and also help create that skeletal structure. You can also use floral tape, but I had electrical tape on hand and I think it's a little sturdier and also gave me the desired color that I wanted. So you're just attaching them to make it one piece. And now you're ready to make the veining. So I'm just taking the back of a pencil and I pushed onto this bristle board to give some indentation and I'm cutting it out with an X-Acto knife. You can also do this with a Cricut, but I wanted to show a really simple version. Just to show that you don't need a lot of fancy tools, just a little extra time and a steady hand. I'm gonna show you a version if you don't wanna spend all that time cutting out with a X-Acto knife. I'm just using a Sharpie paint pen and I'm tracing it on to our cellophane. Now if you wanna add a little extra detail work to your cellophane, which I like to do, I'm taking these Ranger inks, this is the alcohol blending solution, and I'm putting it directly onto this pad. And that is what is gonna help us blend out the alcohol ink. And we're just gonna take whatever color we want and drop it directly onto the cellophane using the stencil underneath to sort of remind us where we want it so we can find out where exactly we want the densest color to help blend inward and give it some really beautiful texture. It creates this sort of bubbling, watery effect. And I think it just really adds a lot of specialness to these wings. Now again, this is just a option, but this is what I like to do if I'm going all out. And then you're gonna set this aside to dry. And when you're ready, you're gonna take some iron-on vinyl and set this side up with sticky side up. I added glitter, I don't recommend it. It ended up not being as cool as I thought it would be. <laughs> now I'm taking the Sharpie version and laying that on top of the sticky side and I'm just going to press it down with my hands, getting as many air bubbles as I can out right away there's going to be a second step where we apply heat to really seal in those layers 
Now this is the version with the Bristol board, just lining up that layer, taking that vinyl and giving it a real nice smooth before taking the heat gun and making all those layers really heat up and combine together. You can also use an iron or a hairdryer, just something that heats up the vinyl to make it really sticky. And also make sure to wear some heat protective gloves and a heat protected surface. These are just kitchen ones. Then I'm taking some scissors and I'm just cutting it out. You can also take a lighter and burn off the edges, but if you choose to do that method, please be in a well-ventilated area. Here's the final product. Two different versions. You tell me which one you like. I think they both came out awesome. Happy crafting. Today we're making Animal Crossing stuffed pillows. Now I'm drafting up a pattern on some scrap paper. It didn't have to be perfect, just a rough size and shape of what I wanted. And if you want a perfect circle, you can take some string and tape and do a loop-de-loop, -loop, then cut it out. Once the patterns were cut out, I laid them down on my fabric, making sure to double it. So each one of these is two layers of felt, and I just traced them out with some marker, and then uh, took some scissors and cut them out. I traced out some of the details from the game, cut them out, and added them to the pillows. And now I'm going to be sewing my pillows shut, but I'm leaving a little gap because we are going to be turning them inside out so we have nice clean seams. Now this is the gap we left and we're just going to turn our pillows right side out. Now for those hard corners that I couldn't quite get my fingers in, I grabbed a edge of a pen just to push them out, make them nice and clean. Now that our pillows are right side out, I took those detail pieces of felt and I'm gluing them down with hot glue, making sure to get the edges nice and smooth since we have some fine points. And with the white detail work, I doubled them up because they were a little see-through. And I glued all those edges down and here we are. Now take some stuffing and they're stuffed. Now for this edge, I wanted to do two different methods. I took some hot glue to finish off this seam on the leaf pillow, and I'm taking some thread and doing an invisible stitch for the fossil pillow. You basically just zigzag back and forth and pull it tight. And then I was just finishing off the seam and you're done. I think they're really cute. Happy crafting. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some etched glass coasters using Armor Etch. Now first up we're going to make a stencil using just paper, a pencil, and a phone. So first thing we're going to take our coaster and we're going to lay it on our tracing paper so we get the exact size and shape that we want so we can draw within that without going over the line. Now we're gonna take our phone and we're gonna place it under our paper and use it like a light box. So you can see the design through to the other side and we're just gonna trace it out. Now once that's done, we can move the phone over to the side and grab a piece of premium vinyl. Now this is pre-cut and we're gonna tape it down to our surface. This is the area where we are going to be tracing the design we just traced onto the premium vinyl. Now I'm gonna cut this out, and the nice thing about doing it with premium vinyl, there is some uh, stencil vinyl, but we don't need to use that because the premium vinyl takes a bit to cure, so it'll be just fine for using it just as a stencil. So I'm going to tape this down to the vinyl just so it doesn't move around. And then we're going to take a stylus tool. You can also use the tip of a pen, but since I have these handy, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to start tracing around the design. Now you're going to use pretty decent pressure. We're just trying to leave an indentation on the other side so that we can see it in the vinyl. So when I lift it up, you'll be able to see that we've left an indentation, which you can see right here. 
Now I'm just taking a pen and tracing out what we just did so that I can see it a little bit better for my X-Acto knife. Now we're just gonna cut it out and follow the lines that we just made with the pen. Now you're gonna wanna push all the way through and cut really clean lines. You can take this as slow as you need because we really wanna make sure that these lines are crisp and that you are connecting each time you pick up that knife because we wanna make sure that the lines don't let any of the chemical through to the other side. And when you're all done, you can peel off the parts that you don't need. I'm just preemptively doing it right here before the next step. Then you're gonna take a piece of adhesive tape or transfer tape. You can also use contact paper, but I just got a roll of this for $7 at the craft store. And you're gonna to wanna to cut a little bit bigger and fold it right there in the center like a taco so that the middle part connects. And then you're gonna grab a scraper, just really, really squeegee it, make sure all of the sticker is really adhered to the other side. And when you're done, I just went ahead and removed those eye sections so that it was really easy to peel off. And you just kind of have to work it, just be really patient. And then you'll have your finished stencil. Now I went ahead and cleaned my coaster with some 91% alcohol, just some rubbing alcohol, just so we make sure we get all of our oils and finger smudges. Now we're gonna take our stencil and again, fold it like a taco and line up those edges. It helps really, really get it nice and even and in the right spot on our coaster. And then take our squeegee, our little scraper, and get all the air bubbles out and really just make sure it's adhered to that surface. And when you're done, you can peel it right off. And now that I have both of our coasters ready for the armor etch, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and line anywhere I don't want to get the chemical. Now, armor etch is a very dangerous and toxic substance, so we wanna make sure we don't get any on our skin and we don't wanna inhale it. So that's why we put the painter's tape on, so we are going to be very cautious while working with this substance. So first, we are going to use goggles, gloves, and a respirator mask because we don't want to inhale any of this. So once we're all set and in our gear, we're going to give this armor edge a stir and then we're going to take a paintbrush and we're just going to brush it on and continually brush for about three to five minutes. Now when working with this chemical, you want to make sure that you are in a very well ventilated area. Either go outside, open a window, and don't forget to wear that respirator. And when you're all done, I like to take some baby wipes and remove any excess just so that we're not working with a very messy product for the next step. I take a plastic bowl full of water, make sure that it's plastic because Armor Edge likes to eat through things. So I just took that same brush and kept cleaning it until I was satisfied that all of the Armor Edge had been removed. Now I gave my surface a nice clean before I continued to work. And when you're all done, you can peel off your stencil and reveal your final product. And this is the final result. I think they came out great, but we aren't gonna stop there today. So I was experimenting with some alcohol inks to tint the glass. So again, I'm just gonna take that alcohol and clean our surfaces. Front and back. And these coasters came with these little stickums on the back, so I'm just gonna remove them for the alcohol ink part, put them off to the side, cause we're gonna put them right back on when we're done. So I'm taking a little piece of cotton swab and putting my Ranger ink on and make sure you do the back side and do quick swipes. And that's all it is. 
Now, you don't have to seal it, but I'm going to, and I found that this Rust-Oleum automotive enamel worked great. So, after I went outside, sprayed it down and let it dry, which only took a few seconds, really, it was very quick, we're gonna add the stickums back on. And now for real, the final result. I think they turned out awesome. Happy crafting.